what is the importance of observability in today's you know once again cloud centric kuba centric world and how you have seen the evolution of observability over the years well i guess observability as a broader term you know for me observability is also you know you write a piece of code and and now you want to be sure that the code does what you what it what it should do so writing a test for example to me is a part of observability because it checks whether a piece of code does what you want it to do so but once the code is running you know in a in a server environment for example you often have that um dev prod parity gap where where your your production environment is is different from your local environment and you cannot possibly replicate the exact situation that's in the production system someplace else where we're getting better there by using declarative automation and blueprints and you know um have a staging system that's structurally the same but it will never be exactly the same so if if you want to know what's happening you need to be scientific about your um you need to be scientific about your your way of writing code and the way about debugging you know running systems as well operational systems as well so just recently i've spent some time with a friend of mine he was looking for a bug and he's and, you know i i watched him and i saw him making guesses and i said you're making guesses because you don't actually know what's happening so you need to find those variables in the system that you want to observe in order to deduce whether your hypothesis that you you generated can be true or false so you need to be able to to check that and observability is a key ingredient for that so this is human operations you need to have a a good observability of your system your your system needs to emit information that will help you making as the operator differential diagnosis so you need to understand for example what's the current utilization of uh, of my file system oh it's 90% well in about 10% you won't be able to write temporary files anymore and you will you will run into undefined behavior so if you don't have that observability that's a very basic simple an example you would see systems going from you know healthy to unhealthy in a few seconds and and now the system is unresponsive because you know nothing in the operating system can can proceed anymore and you will have to figure out with a non-responsive virtual machine or a pod what's actually going on well maybe you have a declarative technology in place that will kill that thing and re- and, and bootstrap it and what, once again if you want to find out what happened you need to have logs or anything else so in this case avoiding the problem means observing resource consumption in this case the file system utilization on continuously having alerts or or countermeasures even being automated so the next level would not only be make those attributes of the, of the system for differential diagnosis open to humans but also to automation because you know if you think about declarative management let's say of a database you describe you want to have a postgres database version 14 whatever three replicas that virtual machine size and you put it you you put this into your kubernetes cluster and say well do that for me there's basically an operator running an agent a software that perceives the environment sees oh there should be a new database or there should be a database being modified that's already existing and acts to make the current state of the system equal to the desired state that has been described by the by the by the by the user and how would you and once this has been described you want to keep it that way so if a host goes down taking down a pod let's say a kubernetes node died and you want to you know have to create that pod again you want this to happen automatically so now if you if you think beyond basic self healing and 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 you know pod magic that happens with using kubernetes anyway if you think about my my favorite example is postgres but you can you know use other examples if you think about for example uh, asynchronous streaming replication you're susceptible to a replication lag so that a, a secondary uh, is not up to date with the primary because for example you have issues in the network so a healthy network would be 
a prerequisite for having a small replication lag. Now, so monitoring network health could also help to predict the replication lag. And, you know, watching at the replication lag could help to predict cluster failures when the cluster manager decides, well, that's not tolerable anymore. So in that sense, if you think about full lifecycle automation, which we at Any9s aim for, observability is a key ingredient because you need to make the data available to the agents uh, wherever they are. It could be in the operator, could be you know, a process co-located in a container running alongside your database, could be something else. Uh, but you need that information and you need to tie it into automation. Uh, making it available to humans, first step, making it available and utilizing it in automation, second step. And that's why we, for example, invest a lot more in services like LogMe, where there's an, an open search uh, uh, based analytics server underneath for logging purposes, you know, with a fancy dashboard and ways to, to uh, look for, uh, for logs. And Prometheus, so that you can observe things, you know, send alerts, and, and, and do all that. And it's just a few examples. So sorry, whenever you, you automate a data service, you also need to make um, you know, its inner state accessible in, in the terms of observability so that you can, uh, you can hook into that automation and do other automation again, like, like onion skinning. You, you want to build things on top of that.